Hi there. Thanks for joining our demo of the accounts receivable functionality of SAP Business One. This is Chelsea Lemaire with Enware Technologies. Uh, if you can see my screen, I'm logged into SAP Business One here. Uh, on the main menu, I'm going to focus mainly in the sales AR module today. So all of the accounts receivable documents in SAP Business One are, they follow what we call a base target relationship, meaning a uh, sales order becomes a delivery, a delivery becomes an AR invoice, an AR invoice becomes a payment or a credit memo, et cetera. And all the documents are tied together for traceability and transparency of you know, what transactions are creating what other transactions. I'll show you an example of this to start out with, with AR invoice number 582. So I'm opening up an AR invoice here that's already been created in the system. And I can see by looking at this AR invoice um, what, what it's based on. So based on sales order 707, that became uh, delivery number 507, okay? If I right click on the background of this document, I can open up what's called the relationship map. And that's a visual representation of the entire life cycle of this invoice. So I can see that um, this AR invoice actually began its life as a sales order. That sales order became a delivery. And from that delivery, we actually created two different invoices, two AR invoices. One became a credit memo, which credited the customer for the um, accounts receivable amount. And this AR invoice has been fully paid. So this is just to show you kind of the life cycle of an accounts receivable document in the system. Okay. When it comes to creating an AR invoice in the system, there's a few different ways. Um, the first way that a lot of accounts receivable teams that I've worked with have done is by using the open items list in the system. The open items list is one of the native reports that you can use to see any open documents of a specific type. So I'm going to look at open AR invoices. And I can see this is all of the um, sorry, I'm going to look at, at open deliveries. So what this means is these sales orders have been delivered to the customer, but they have not yet been invoiced because they're an open delivery. So a lot of AR teams use this report to say, okay, here's my open AR invoices that need to be invoiced to the customer. And they can do this one at a time if your volume um, of transactions makes it reasonable for you guys to do this one at a time. So I'm going to show you just an example of how easy it is to take an open delivery to an AR invoice. So I'm gonna use uh, this one here. So I can open up this delivery. I can see that it was, so it uh, should have been invoiced a long time ago. This is a test database, but I can see when it was delivered, I can see that it's still open, meaning it hasn't been invoiced to the customer. And I can simply copy to AR invoice. Now this AR invoice can be added to the system. And now if I pull up this AR invoice, I see the history of it. I see the original sales order it was based on. I can see the delivery. I can see the total amount. And if I go to my customer master, I can see the account balance, this document in the account balance that they now owe this, they owe for this invoice in the system. From this AR invoice, I can also do things like preview the template. I can print. I can email, I can fax, um, all using these top toolbar icons. So that's the manual way to create an AR invoice in the system. An open shipment or delivery um, becomes an AR invoice. You can also create a standalone ad hoc AR invoice at any time just by opening up an AR invoice, selecting a customer, and entering you know, items or service type items to invoice that customer for. You can always do that, but it doesn't, of course, it doesn't come from any other document if you do it that way. The other way to create AR invoices, which is um, more of a batch process, is what we call a document generation wizard. So the document generation wizard is used to um, define a set of parameters and define kind of a, um, a schedule or a weekly task that you guys can use to batch create documents. I created this one earlier 
ready for invoicing. So what this parameter does is it looks in the system. It says, what's my target document? I'm creating AR invoices. What's my posting date going to be? When do, what are my base documents? So I want to look at open deliveries in the system and turn them into AR invoices. So any shipment that's sitting out there that's gone out the door that has not yet been invoiced to the customer. And I'm going to choose my posting date to 2020. I just want to uh, capture enough uh, test data in this. Okay. I can choose to consolidate or not consolidate. So every shipment becomes an invoice, or I can consolidate by the business partner, by the address, by uh, different methods. And what customers do I want to consider? What do I want the system to do if it encounters an error, etc.? And I'm going to save parameter and execute. So some of this is old test data, so I'm getting some errors here, but you see that I do create multiple documents here. So AR invoice number 591 was created, AR invoice number 592, and 593. There was some you know, old test data in there, so I'm getting some tax errors and stuff like that, but the system does show you an exception log. So anything that's failed, um, it'll tell you why it failed, and you can go in and investigate, fix it, and go from there. So these AR invoices have been created, and if we go and look at the AR invoices in the system now, we'll see these are the ones that were just created by the document generation wizard. Okay, so you can manually create AR invoices or you can batch create AR invoices. And the same statement goes for sending the AR invoices. You can either send them one at a time using the top toolbar icons or using the uh, advanced print and delivery package that I've included in your estimate. You guys can mass deliver in different ways, email, um, fax, uh, print and mail, et cetera. You can do that with a batch process instead of doing it one at a time. Okay. So once we have AR invoices in the system and we've invoiced the customers, the next thing I want to show you is the AR aging report. So the customer receivables aging report is in business partner, business partner reports, customer receivables aging. Oop, that is the wrong thing I selected. There we go. Customer receivables aging. So this selection criteria, this is where I can say, you know, what do I want to group by customer? Do I want to group by sales employee? Do I want to filter and only show certain customers? Um, if you had multi branches set up, you could select the division that you want to run aging for. And I can define my buckets here. So the standard ones are 30, 60, 90, and 120, but these are editable. So you can change the aging buckets to months, um, counting periods, et cetera. So once I select my, uh, I set my selection criteria, I can run the AR aging report. And this report shows me all of my AR aging with the different buckets. And most of these are really old because it is a test database, but there is, uh, so Louis Vuitton here, I can see I've got some in the 31 through 60 bucket. We've got some in the 121 bucket. And I've got some in the uh, future that they're not yet due bucket, okay? I can collapse all and just see a summary level of what they owe, or I can expand all and see the invoices in each bucket. And from this report, I can either export to Excel or PDF just to have, or I can actually use this report to generate customer statements, detail aging reports, et cetera, and send those directly from this window. I can do it from multiple customers, so I can pick and choose which customers I wanna send the customer statement to by just holding Control or Shift on my keyboard. And then I can use these top toolbars to print or email, fax even to your customers. Okay. So once a customer has paid you guys, the next step is the banking module. So we're going to record a manual incoming payment. So 
um, you receive a check from a customer and you want to record it into the system. We go into your banking module, incoming payments. I can just enter my customer number. So who, which customer sent me a check? And when I enter the customer name, it shows me all of the open AR invoices for this customer. Now this customer is way overdue. They have a lot of invoices to pay. I can pick and choose which invoices the check applies to. So in this case, I'm going to say they paid this invoice, this invoice, and this invoice here. And this total amount should total up to the amount of the payment that you received from the customer. The next step is to tell the system, how did they pay me? So um, they sent me a check with this due date for the amount. I can just right click, copy balance due, and it pulls in that total amount there. Um, what is their bank name? If, uh, if you have that information, you can put in their bank account, et cetera. Um, or it can just be like a generic customer bank at this point. And what is their check number? So I'm going to say check number 4444. Okay. And when I add that, those invoices automatically become reconciled in the system. This check was received into our checks clearing account. So the way that the system works natively is that we've got a check in hand. That check is not yet at the bank. So we've recorded that the customer has paid us and their account is reconciled for these three invoices, but this money isn't yet in the bank. And that requires one step further, which is called a deposit. So I can use the deposit screen. Once I have all of the checks in hand and I'm going to the bank to deposit it, I can open the deposit screen. Here are all of my checks. Here's the one that I just created today. And I could say I'm depositing these three checks into the bank account for a total amount. That's a big deposit. And I can choose um, you know, which bank account to deposit it to. There's my GL account. I have to choose my bank account. There we go. And when I add that deposit, now those checks have recorded, been recorded as moving out of checks clearing into the bank. Okay, so that's how you manually record a payment for each customer one at a time. Um, if your customers are paying via bank transfer, you also have the option to use the payment wizard. So if you receive a file or notification from your bank, that they've received multiple payments for multiple customers, um, you know, say once a week, or if you want to do this every day, even you can use the payment wizard to record those bank transfer payments um, in batch. So you don't have to do them one at a time, one customer at a time. So I'm going to load Let me go back. I'm going to start a new one. I'm going to say this is called what, what is my payment uh, run date? A lot of people use, you know, their bank transfer or, you know, the type of payment and the date. So I'm just going to say VMAR, AR payment demo. What is my payment run date? And I'm doing incoming payments, bank transfer payments. Okay. So as I go through here, their name. I say, what customers do I want to consider? I can pick and choose or I can um, select all. Due date, I want to select by due date. When was the customer supposed to pay me? Which bank account did they pay into? So, and I can select multiple and do this all at one time, but I'm just going to do one bank at a time. So my Bank of America bank account, this is coming into that bank account. And I can see here. That I have two customers with open air invoices that pay into that bank account. I can pick and choose which ones, which invoices that they're paying. So I'm going to say this customer 
has just paid these first three invoices here. And I can you know, expand all, I can drill into the invoices if I'd like, but I can pick and choose which invoices have been paid. I said that customer has paid those three invoices and this customer has paid these two invoices. And when I go next, I have a few options. I can either just save the recommendations and come back to them later, or I can execute the payment run, which will actually um, clear those invoices and mark them as paid. Okay. So I can see here, two payments were added, two bank transfers were added. And I can view the payment summary. So two different customers paid into my bank account, totaling these amounts. Okay, so that's how you can mass record uh, or batch record your bank transfer payments into the system. Uh, payments can be recorded via check, credit card, cash, or bank transfer using the methods that I talked about today. Um, included in your estimate is also the credit card processor for SAP Business One. I don't have that installed in my demo database, but the credit card processor allows you guys to authorize and settle cust customer credit cards from directly inside the system. It communicates with a payment gateway like authorize.net, something like that. All customer credit card information is stored tokenized. It's not stored in your database. So for security purposes, um, you know, you don't have to worry about that, uh, but it allows you guys to authorize and settle credit cards directly from within the system. And that is everything that I was planning to show you guys in terms of AR. If you guys have any further questions, please feel free to reach out and request a follow-up demo. Thanks so much.